the Irish Economic Crisis Visualised with Power BI. Hello, my name is Bob Duffy and this is my Power BI demo competition entry. I hope you enjoy it. We've probably all been affected by the global economic crisis in 2007 caused by the collapse of the Bear Stearns hedge fund in the United States. This affected many countries all around the world. However, for our story, we're going to be focused on a few countries in Europe, specifically those in the Eurozone. In particular, we're interested in a very small country called Ireland, with a population of about 4.6 million. When you compare Ireland to the rest of the countries in, in Europe, um, it's quite small. Germany, for example, has about 80 million people, and Ireland's about 22nd down the scale. Many large corporations operate out of Ireland, resulting in a GDP per capita um, much higher than a lot of other countries in Europe. Um, in fact, um, the only country that's got substantially larger is L Luxembourg. And if we were to look at all of the countries across uh, Europe to try and compare their GDP per capita, we'd, we'd see that only a few of them had a similar GDP per capita to Ireland. Ireland's growth during its boom years was unprecedented. Uh, if we were to look at the years 2000 to 2006, for example, um, up to 16% per year. Um, and if we were to compare that to some of its neighbours, you know, the United Kingdom and Germany, um, it, it would seem to have done much better. During that build-up to the economic crisis, um, Ireland also seemed to do a fantastic job of managing its debt compared to other countries in Europe. In some cases, decreasing the national debt while maintaining good growth. During the 2000 period, most countries across Europe managed to keep good growth of around 5%, um, but Ireland was nearly treble that. This growth continued year on year, with Ireland continually um, in the top quadrant of performance. As the recession hit though in 2007, Ireland was the first there, and it was certainly hit hardest. The Irish government issued an emergency guarantee on deposits, and eventually had to receive a bailout from EU and the IMF. This massively increased the government debt per capital to unprecedented levels. How much money did come into Ireland and what did we spend all that money on? Well, before 2008, over, over 100 billion euro flowed in to the economy. Um, this was largely fueling bank loans, so the Irish banks were lending money at a rate of knots. Now, what were they lending it to? Um, well, apart from speculation on the bank shares themselves, largely on the house price fueling the house bubble at the time. There was almost a six-fold increase in property prices before the crash. The higher the property prices, the more money the bank would lend, the more money would flow into the country. Now, was this spending on houses sensible? Probably not. Using census data, we can compare the number of houses that had been built in Ireland to the number of households in Ireland. Simple supply and demand, and we can see there's a massive gap of effectively vacant houses across Ireland. Now let's take a deeper look at where these vacant houses were being built in Ireland. You'd expect that new developments should be near where the households are, and we can see that, you know, Dublin and Cork are the two major uh, cities in Ireland, um, so that's where most of the population centres are. If we were to look at data from the 2011 census in Ireland, we could see where vacant properties are. And you would assume that they would maybe be next to the population centres. But what we actually see is slightly different. Well, there are a lot of vacant houses around Cork and Dublin, um, percentage-wise, they're actually smaller than the rural areas. In fact, a lot of the new estates being built weren't even in the suburbs around the population centres, but they were in very rural areas. It transpired that inadequate local planning combined with central tax breaks created the perfect storm
for builders to build entire ghost estates in the middle of nowhere. In some cases, counties like Leitrim had up to 45% vacant properties. Thank <laughs> you. 